to my channel and today I have my really good friend Leslie here with me. So me and Leslie are going to be talking about some post-grad life stuff, um, what we've kind of experienced now. So she just graduated last year um, in 2019 and I graduated in 2018. So our experiences are very different and very similar. We're just going to be asking each other questions back and forth and hopefully you guys can take some stuff away from it. I'm just going to start this conversation off by Leslie kind of introducing herself and letting us know what she was studying while she went to UT. Hey everyone, I'm Leslie Franco and I graduated May 2019 last year from the University of Texas at Austin and I majored in social work. And I have the shirt, social worker here. Uh, but pretty much kind of what uh, I'm really passionate about is advocating for foster youth and dealing with their mental health issues. So what I wanted to do or what I want to do is get my MSW and eventually open up my own practice and offer mental health services to foster youth. So she did complete four and whole years at UT. We both ended up in the same sorority. Um, that's where we kind of became friends. Meanwhile, I was studying for speech language pathology and I finished in three years versus the four years I kind of felt the need to do it because of money. Um, I wanted to just save money and not spend so much money on housing and stuff. So I finished a year earlier. We'll kind of get into some questions and as we're asking each other questions, we'll kind of be snacking on some stuff here too, okay? First question is, what were you excited about once you graduated? Nothing! No, <laughs> no um, I was really excited just to be done with college. I think my last year at UT was really difficult for me. I It was difficult money-wise and I think just, it was just very draining. I wanted to be done. Like, I didn't want to struggle anymore in college. Like, those things where you only maruchans is like really real and I was just ready to just be financially stable. For me, something that I was excited about was I was really convinced that I was gonna go back home and just be with my family. Or like after being so far away from my family all those years, I was kind of ready to set that aside and go home and just enjoy my time with my family. But what were you shocked about once you graduated? Okay, so once I graduated, my biggest shock was really not getting into grad school. It was really devastating, but I had to quickly come up with a plan B. For me, it was different because I knew I wanted to go to grad school, but I just knew it wasn't going to happen once I graduated for financial reasons. I was not going to put myself in a position where I was going to be in debt to be like in grad school and to just live like penny by penny, like paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do that. So I think what was just shocked was like, kind of just finding what was the right thing for me like what job was the right thing for me it really hit me like a train like so this. like all the changes were such a sh changes were such a sh all the changes were such a shock to you or what girl yes honestly yeah it was just i was not expecting it because i think when people graduate college they're like yeah like independence and all that but they don't really tell you the parts that suck but like the takeaway from that is like you should have a sort of plan B or some expectations like for when you graduate. If the last year you're so focused on just trying to get the requirements to finish and be out of school that when like it happens, you're just taken by surprise at like everything that comes at you. So our experiences are different in that, yes, we both went to UT, that was similar. We have our different um, degrees and stuff, but she actually came back home to Dallas. Like she's from here versus me. My family is from San Antonio. I ended up moving to Dallas, so further away from my family. So what was it like kind of just moving back home? Like I feel like um, that was hard. Yeah, I think I have a pro and a con. So the pro side was the fact that like me being back home was going to give me that financial stability. Like my parents were not mm -hmm. going to like require me to pay rent and I would be able to come home and like have food made, you know, like or have food available to me. I think the con is that you, that freedom that you have is kind of like taken away or because you're so used to like doing your own thing in Austin and then like coming back home to your parents. And my parents are super traditional. So it was like having to constantly tell them where I was going to be at. And it was just different. Like your, I guess your sense of independence was kind of like taken away. You always had in your mind, like I'm here for four years and then going back home. Well, essentially like I remember, I knew I wanted to go to grad school. So my vision was I'm gonna, you know, finish like UT and go straight to grad school. But the thing I really realized is I don't want to be in debt. 
I feel like you just need to have that conversation with your parents. Luckily, my parents are like understanding, even though they're very traditional. So it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Me having to move further away, that initially wasn't what I wanted. Like at first, I did go in with the mentality. I feel like a lot of people do. You have this idea, oh, my hometown is where I'm going to end up or something, you know? Like, But then when it came down to it, having to pick like where I wanted to work. At the time, Dallas was paying more. So, and my boyfriend lived here at the time. So I decided to make that move over here. And at first it was really hard just because I've never been that many hours away from San Antonio. Now it's five hours. Back then when I was living in Austin, it was only an hour and a half. It wasn't that big of a change because I was already like that when I attended college. But just for, for so much longer, like now it, it became about myself. It wasn't so much about school or anything. It was just like me and my boyfriend. Like, what are we going to do this weekend? What am I going to do to like keep myself occupied this weekend? So that was a really big change. It was hard at first, um, but I got through it. And now I, I, I don't regret it. I really like living in Dallas. The next question is how did our plans change? So my plans changed just because I had to think, well, how was I, what was I going to do after graduation? And like, how was I going to find a job when I didn't even have a car, you know? So that was another struggle that I had to face. Um, I applied to City Year. So y'all should definitely look up what City Year is because I don't want to give the whole spiel. But um, luckily the school that I served at, that I was in, was literally across the street. Like, I think that was God in its own way, just trying to make mm -hmm. everything like aligned for me. Because I did City Year, I was um, working with students in the fifth grade classroom. So being there, that kind of, they really inspired me to become an educator. And I applied to Teach for America. I applied just to do it. I didn't think I was going to get accepted, to be honest. Like the recruiter messaged me, they're like, I want to be the first to congratulate you. And I was like, congratulate me. You were that nervous or you didn't feel good enough? I just felt like I wasn't, because it's like, a, it's a real competitive program. So I just didn't think I was going to get in, you know? So mm -hmm. when I got that text message, I was like, wait, what? I got in. So then, oh, um, that's so, nice. so then I realized I'm going to do uh, Teach for America in New Orleans. So my plans, like, it was like a whole 360. Yeah. Because social work to like teaching, educating to, now, right? Yeah. To like social work to like, you know, being an educator now. But now I'm like thinking, well, I'm going to move to a whole nother state. It's just my plans completely changed. But overall, like, I know that my end goal is to go back and get my master's degree. But this is just the... I feel like this is like the path I need to take in order to get me to my MSW. So I feel like, like that's common though. Like we have other friends too mm -hmm. that wanted something while they were in undergrad, like doing their undergrad education at UT. They wanted something completely different. And then like in that gap year, or whatever you call it, like when you don't, when your plans don't fall through, if you're looking for graduate school, I feel like that year, year and a half, two years, like really reshapes you and your values. Mm -hmm. And people just find out that like, this is what I truly want instead. Cause mine was yeah. kind of like that too. Just because I didn't get into grad school, like I obviously still had to work. I had to find a job. I went in, you know, as an SLPA and the things I was doing, like working directly one-on-one -on -one with kids, I fell in love with the kids and everything. And then now I'm working at a school as an SLPA. That's made me just love that small interaction, the 30 minutes I get with kids and stuff. So I've gone out of my way and taken some teaching courses as well. While I'm still an SLPA, I have a slight interest in being an educator too. I think that that year and a half or whatever really helps when things don't go your way like it'll all work out okay number five is what are our plans now i feel like we really already talked about it she'll be doing um tfa yes <laughs> in where what city in new orleans <coughs> louisiana <coughs> are you okay i'm a little messed up are you excited yeah i'm gonna be a sixth grade english teacher ah. i'm excited i mean it's a new city i probably won't know anyone but I think that's just gonna push me. I think I'm a sociable person, but I think it's just also a different city. So I'm really excited to I see what I think it'll benefit you. And then like, how long is this commitment? Just a year? It's a two year commitment, so. So you haven't even thought about after? I, well, afterwards, I, I've honestly thought about like moving back to Austin and just doing my MSW. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a one year program, so. Let's see who knows. Maybe yeah. I, I really like education and yeah. I'll stay, but definitely masters. I, I know I'm going to get it. I just 
want to prepare for it. So the next few years over there. Yeah, the ah, next few years. That's exciting. I know. Ah. Okay, I won't be moving. <laughs> my plans right now are just, I really, really like my job and where I'm at. I work for a charter district and I work at a school. Um, so I see the kids every 30 minutes. And right now I just completed my first year and I feel like that went really, really well. So I'm excited to go back. Next one kind of goes into a different realm. It's asking um how you adjusted to like adult life from college life like how i feel like college especially ut i don't know if it's just ut it's like a lot of partying especially with sixth street and stuff like you go out a lot so how was it adjusting from that like doing that very often to like adult life responsibilities it was weird because you know like usually like in college i like 6 p.m it's like you're starting like a brand new it's like you're starting like a brand new day you're like okay well i think i have like this project i need to work on but like at home, it's like, well, what do I do now? So I got into like watching The Real Housewives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, because you mean like that school expectation wasn't there anymore. Yeah, like, like what you had to do after your work day was over. School it was, day. It was done. Like where she's in college, like your day's not done when you leave classes. You have mm -hmm. to study, you have to do this, X, Y, and Z, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's constantly come, something to do, yeah. When I came back home, it was like, well, what do I do now? So I would literally, I would watch the real housewives and just kind of like just do <laughs> that you spent your time. and then just kind of did you feel like it was a waste though yes and no i felt like i needed that time to decompress august to september that's what i did just watch netflix and stuff and then after that is when i started to get a routine so after that like me and my mom would go run you know i would really use my planner i would read a book like i started to do more productive things yeah. as i knew how to manage my time i think it's different for everyone but it took me time to like start feeling like I was doing something with my life. Mine, I feel like, took like a whole year. I was just, honestly, I think I was so depressed because of things like that. Like, I didn't know, one, I didn't know like how to manage my money. I just had all these different expectations of like where my money was supposed to be spent. And that's how I would spend my time. So like weekends instead of, cause I was like, I'm too old to be going to bars or <laughs> whatever. Instead of doing that, I would like spend my money on football games. I would go to, um, the mall every now and then and like spend a bunch of money on clothes like that was my way of keeping myself occupied because i didn't want to stay home and just watch tv everyone's kind of different but like when i would watch tv i felt like why am i not doing something else i could be doing like home improvement stuff i could be cooking i could be because yeah she's right like you're always on that go so i think the best thing like you said was just like establish a routine i think it's like we had like a different experience like for me a city i was not making like money at all so mm -hmm. i really didn't have the luxury to like spend money i think the only time i would spend money is like maybe on the weekends when i would like eat out somewhere you know okay so the money aspect i feel like kind of goes into another topic yeah. like the next question was gonna go around hispanic expectations we both come from hispanic um families we're both first generation college grads so our parents didn't go to college so they don't know like after you graduate that it's hard to find a job or that you you have to alternate your plans or whatever so in both of our experiences i feel like our parents expected us to immediately make money. So how was that for you not making money? With me, like even right now, I haven't even told my parents I'm going to New Orleans because they have no idea. What no do they don't react? I don't know. So I haven't told them for that reason because I feel like in Hispanic communities, like they want you to come back home. Like mm -hmm. once you graduate college, like my parents loved the idea that I was like coming back home. And for me, it was kind of like, I was a little sad because it wasn't where I wanted to be in life but i think because my parents are so used to me being around that once i'm telling them i'm moving to like a different state and you know for various reasons i don't my parents are not gonna be able to like to visit me in new orleans so i think that's gonna be like a whole different situation that i'm not ready to deal with and i'm not ready for them to, to deal with that. yeah i'm not yeah, i think i'm gonna tell them the day before i leave <laughs> <laughs> that way they can't stop me did you have to explain to your parents that you weren't making money or why you weren't making money when you graduated? Um, and they didn't ask the moment, like the moment I did city year, like I told them, like I pretty much said, like you know, this year, like I'm trying to get on my feet. You know what I mean? Like, and they they understood it. You know, like I said, because my parents have no idea, like of college and stuff, which for one thing was good. And sometimes, like I remember my dad like telling me, like oh, like you should be like an engineer like something that like makes money but then i was like but that's not my passion and i feel like that happened often too yeah you know but i feel like with my passion and what i'm trying to do like i know 
there's different avenues to make money. I had a really strong sense of myself and what I wanted to do in life That's and good time. my mm -hmm. purpose that anything that was said like that, I'm like, I mean, look at where you, you are, you know, <laughs> like, I don't care about what you have to say, you know what I mean? Like, and it's kind of messed up, but like, I don't really care. You know, I didn't really care. Yeah, mine wasn't so upfront like that. Mine, I feel like that expectation was kind of put on me, but it was never really said. Like my parents would support, they made it clear they would support anything like I would do if I was working, if I went back home to not work or get on my feet or whatever, that was really clear. But I feel like there was this always like a slight push. I need to make them proud. So me moving to Dallas was like a big, not setback. They they did question it. Like, you know, why aren't you coming home? Like she said, like how they want you to come back home and they're confused as to like why you don't want to do that. So I had to explain that. And then once I did say like it was to make more money, they completely like said okay and they were fine with it um so that expectation was there yes but i feel like it didn't play that big of a role it was more like my own expectations like i want a job i want a good paying job because i worked so hard for three years you know and i attended ut and that too i feel like going to ut people have this idea like it's gonna be so easy to get a job that's definitely what i thought like yeah the network is so huge like i'm bound to get a job somewhere because i attended ut but it's it just depends where you're applying, I guess, and stuff. Our next one goes into more personal, like, mental health stuff is what I wanted to talk about. Like, what do you think you face? So I kind of talked about some depression. Um, mine was more, like, drinking, to be completely honest, because um, my last two years at UT, I feel like that's a lot of what I was doing. And it was so normalized, like, in college, you know, drinking, like, a six-pack in, uh, like, one sitting on a Friday night. And it wasn't until I became like a full out adult on my own that I would attend the doctor or go to the doctor's office. And when they would ask questions like that, when I would say, yeah, like I drink six to eight beers. What? Like it was just bad. So it, it, back then, like I didn't see it like that, but that's all I wanted to do. On top of the freedom that I had, it was like, oh, I can have beer in my fridge all day, every day. Um, but it wasn't until later, like I said, like that I realized that I was going through all that. I mean, for sure, me, once I graduated, like I told Karina, like, graduation is so weird because May, man, you're on top of the world. You're, like, at your peak. Like, you're, like, yeah, I graduated from UT, and, like, everyone's just celebrating you. But literally, once that summer hit, it was, like, it went, everything went down to the trenches. Like, everything was horrible because I started to experience, like, post-grad depression. And with me, it hit me really hard because I had, I felt like I... I had to hide it from like my parents like really the only people that were close to me knew what i was going through and oh my god i just cussed <laughs> no but like i was i was going through it and karina was there to see like what i was going through because like i said i was like i felt like you no, know, i don't feel like i settled for city year like i really liked what they stood for but i was like yo like i really i just graduated with this degree like is this where I should like, be? Like, is this what I'm really doing? You know, like, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? Like, it was just one of those things where I felt like I had wasted four years. I had wasted money. You know, I had sacrificed so much for what, you know? So I was dealing with that. And another thing was, it's like, I don't know. I just felt like I wasn't... Lost. I was lost. I was sad, you know? It was like sad that college was over, you know. I'm like, wow, am I ever gonna Day two? Am I ever gonna peak like that, you know? Did you ever feel not good enough? Because there's a term I think it's like it, imposter syndrome, and I feel like that's like the definition's more like not feeling like you're good enough or like up to par, like to the expectations. And I don't know if it's just because we attended like a top college or just college in general or what. I just felt like I didn't have the resources. Like I said, I didn't have a car. So I'm like, um, when I was applying to jobs, like I was like, man, I can't even do this job because it's like, how the hell, how am I gonna get there? And it was like, I was in a situation where like, I didn't have the res like my parents couldn't help me. Like, you know, my parents have like their own bills to pay. So I had to like meet my, like it was just all of that stuff, like financial reasons, like, feeling like man like I don't know like I'm not even gonna be making that much money at this job like what was the whole point of me like getting this degree you know mm -hmm. it was just all that played a role in it it was really it was really hard I think for me it's not until I want to say September once I actually started working mm -hmm. I found my sense of purpose and which is why I'm so grateful I did city year because I realized they gave me back that purpose that I knew I always had and it just and I and I Nothing see where I'm at no, because I feel like when you when you do something with purpose, like 
everything is worthwhile. So what's something you wish that someone would have told you, I guess? Like, do you, do you wish people would have told you that that's a thing or did you know that's a thing? Um, I knew it was a thing, but it was just something I would see on Twitter, like postgraduate depression, I'd be like, huh, sucks for you. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Honestly, like, honestly, it's, well, man, it sucks for you, dude. Like, you don't know what you're doing with your life, you know? But mm -hmm. I wish someone would, someone would have told me is that, look at the big picture. So keep, you know, what is it? Begin with the end in mind type of thing. You know, you really have to have a strong sense of purpose and of who you are in order to really see that all that stuff is just part of the journey. It sounds cliche, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Do you think you got all of that in your four years, like going to UT? Your sense of purpose and stuff i feel like i well yeah i did yeah. in regards to my major like i i knew i liked speech from like the moment i started mm -hmm. and, um interning and stuff mm -hmm. so now like i feel really strong in that area like i was meant for this yeah because i mean i started ut with like biology pre-med i was like oh, yeah i'm gonna be a psychiatrist because mm -hmm. i was yeah i was always like into like mental health i always knew i wanted to do something really? mental health so yeah, I mean, it's part of, I think it's part of the journey. Luckily, all my classes aligned to where like, once I switched to like social work, I didn't have to like, it didn't set me back at all. So. so what advice would you finish off by giving people that just graduated? Oh man, what advice would I give someone? Especially like with Corona and stuff, like oh, that, all that that's went a whole on. situation. Because some people like can't, like really can't find jobs because they yeah. like paused on stuff like that. No, yeah, that, that can't even, envision the whole thought of like how this is like Playing affecting people. people yeah you know like even like with grad applications and all that stuff like i know like that's for sure like being delayed i think one advice i would give someone is like don't ever don't judge yourself based on someone else's like success or like their progress because like you're writing your own narrative so just like like i said like you're not gonna realize it at the time but i think if you're working towards your goals every single day, you're meant to be at the place you're gonna be. Mine's completely different from yours. Mine was just gonna be to save your money. <laughs> save, and I mean, no, seriously, like whether save you're your working money. or not, whether you're at save. home or a different city, whether you're with your roommate, your boyfriend, whoever, by yourself, yeah. whatever, like save money. Learn to do your own toenails. That's what I will say. Learn to, cause man, let me tell you something. I, that's what I would do at first. I would like do my own toenails, uh, but then I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna start getting like a pedicure and stuff, blah blah blah. And that got addicting, and I can't stop, cause I can't <laughs> do my own toenails. <laughs> yeah, still that's something I have to like. There's some things I compromise with, and that's one of them. Tengo patas de gavilán. Excuse me, well, you have what? Look it up, gavilán. Like, <laughs> it's a type of bird, and it like has really long. What is it? What are these called? Tentacles? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> Tentacles, they got claws! What claws! Do you mean? So, learn to do your own toenails, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, with that in mind, we're gonna close out the video, okay? So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Also, Leslie has a um, small business called Let's Do Treats and she makes strawberries from her home. I'll Let's do put treats. it in this little corner down here and in the description. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!